Hi, I'm Kinkas and I'm Synth DIY Guy. Welcome to today's video. Today we're going to have a look at the Endorphins Golden Master module. This is a really cool output module that combines a bunch of different functions. It's a three band multi band compressor, a three band EQ, and a three band stereo enhancer module with balanced outputs and trim pots for the input and output. It also has a brick wall limiter on the output and a noise gate. So it's basically a complete toolkit for massaging your final mix and delivering it to your audience uh, in full force. It's actually a combination of features that I'd been wondering about. I'm a fan of output modules. I like delivering a nice, clean, balanced output to my front of house mix or to my computer interface. And I have quite a few. I have a Dranalog, a Faco, and Erica Synth output modules. But for a while, I've been wondering why doesn't somebody add some EQ and compression and, you know, just some basic processing to an output module so that you can shape your output sound to fit the venue that you're in and uh, really kick your audience's butt, right? So people have been using outboard equipment for this kind of a thing. I know Julia from Endorphins, before the Golden Master, she was using a think a TC Electronics device for that purpose. That's probably where the idea came from to make Golden Master. And it's a digital module. It's uh, DSP based. And basically you have a mode switch over here and you just press it once and you cycle through the three modes. Mode one blue is EQ. So basically the three knobs are just your volume knobs for each band, right? So it's an EQ. It's flat in the center. You cut towards the counterclockwise direction and boost in the clockwise direction. Pressing the mode button again gets you into the compressor page where you can use the same knobs, the same three knobs to determine how much compression you want for each one of your bands, right? High, mid, and low. And then the third press of the button gives you a purple light out of the LED and that's the stereo enhancer. And again, you have stereo enhancement controls for all three bands. Though you probably wouldn't want to stereo enhance the low end that much, it's nice to have it so that you can actually decrease the stereo and make your low end more focused in the center, right? And uh, when you press the button again, you're back to the EQ portion, right? There are also three little buttons here, right? By just pressing the buttons once quickly, you are muting each one of those bands, which can be really cool as a performance effect. You can, for example, isolate just the mid band by simultaneously muting high and low, or really you can do the same with any of the three bands. Now a long press on each button turns on and off the compressor. So if I hold it, now you see that it's lit brightly, right? So when it's lit brightly, that means the compressor has been engaged for these bands. And I can now press the button. If I see red, that is compressor setting and I can set how much compression I want, right? The brick wall limiter, there are no controls available for it. It's just gonna keep your peaks from exceeding a certain limit. And that way you can be confident about setting your input gain for the mixer or for your audio interface, knowing that you're not gonna pass that level, that that's gonna be the absolute loudest that your signal is gonna get. So when it's lit like that and you press it quickly once, you see it dimly lit, that means it's muted. Once you press it again, you unmute it, and now you see if it's brightly lit, that means that the compressor is engaged for that band. Bypass it for now, right? So all I did was hold the mode button for a few seconds, right? If I hold it again, it'll come back live, okay? While it's bypassed, let's uh, program a little mm -hmm. sequence here on my new black Keystep Pro that I just got from Arturia. Thanks, Arturia. Basically, I have three melodic voices going here. Track three is a bass line. Which is basically one of the even VCOs going through the Erica Synth's Black LPG. I have a track two here is a more kind of paddy kind of a sound, which is the other even VCO going through Steve's MS22 filter, which is also a VCA because of its gain section. So you might look at this case and say, you don't have enough VCAs, and probably, but I do have enough options built into the modules. The LPG itself acts as a VCA, Steve's Evans 22 as well, and the, the uh, Frequency Central product is my other voice number four here. 
right? And that has its own VC and envelope and everything. So these are my three melodic voices, and they're going into the Hexpander. I've got the uh, Zen Delay here connected in the effect send, as well as my Ergesin's Black Spring Reverb. So those are the effects you're hearing, right? And then on track one here of the Keystep Pro, I have it set to drum, and I'm triggering a Pico Drum 2 as a kick drum. I have the Kraken, both the uh, head and the rim inputs are connected to different trigger outputs of my Keystep Pro. And then I have a sort of a snare here on the sample drum. In fact, why don't I load up uh, a hi-hat instead? That's a good one. Cool. Maybe I want a little bit more decay on the snare. Maybe we want a little less overtones. A little bit smaller shell. There we go. It's a good amount of snares. Cool, so that's it. That's just four four drum triggers and three melodic voices. I think that's enough for this test. So let's quickly program beat here. So I'm gonna choose the kick drum, give us a four on the floor, play it. And now I can record some hi-hat. There you go, kind of a house samba kind of a deal. Right, and remember right now the gold master is disengaged. Now let's do a bit of a bass line here. I want it to be longish and here we go. One, two, Got a bass line going. Let's see what we'll do with the other voices. Right, that's voice track two. And here, here comes track four. Pretty good. Now let's engage the Golden Master just as I have it set. So right away we hear a bump in volume and here I can set compression amount per band. We get a little bit more presence that way. Now by pressing the mode switch I can turn it back to the EQ, so check it out, here's, I've just dialed down all of the bass. So already that's a pretty cool performance effect, right? You can dial down the high too, and we can have a section where all we hear is the mids, right? Bring back the highs now, bring back the bass, give it a little boost, make it a little bassier. Let's compare it again with the bypass. There are LEDs that are lighting up. These are the uh, VU meters, basically. Just to the left and right of the mode LED, just indicate signal. And then the farther ones, the, the ones closest to the edge are actually clipping, right? Which you might not want, because it does distort a little bit. Now, if I want to do that same effect that I just did with the mids, 
with uh, without actually turning the knobs I can simply mute right mute these two bands there you go by the way that the way the knobs work is they catch your settings so they'll never jump to whatever the knob position is so your settings don't jump around you know so here let's unmute again just the bass this time cool now we can unmute the highs right now let's have a look at the stereo spreader section right i can make my bass centered right and then i can play around and here i can have the mid band in stereo with the high band centered so we get like that centered hi-hat that centered uh, snares but we get like the meat of the melodic voices open up So again, let's listen to it bypassed. It just it just glues it all together, right? It, it's especially for this kind of patch and performance where you're doing beats and and melodies. You want people to dance. You want the dance floor to be really kicking. Here's the bass all the way up. All of them all the way down. As you can hear, it's not a complete cut, right? It cuts by quite a bit, but not completely. bit more sizzle right so when you go play live you never know what the PA is set like so maybe your patch sounds great at home and then you get to the venue and it lacks a little a little simmer a little a little shimmer in the high end or maybe a little punch on the bass or maybe it's a little boxy sounding so you can cut off some of the mid and by the way the outputs are balanced they are mini plug but they are stereo mini plugs. I got these little adapters from Amazon that just go from mini plug stereo to a female quarter inch stereo plug. And then I have some cables that I made that are TRS balanced to XLR, which I then connect with uh, microphone cables to my system. Let's make a new beat. Number two here and set it to play. Come back to track one, choose the kick. Let's do a different kick now. Why don't we change the tempo to make it a little faster. And uh, I'll program in some hi-hats. And let's get uh, this snare going. Swing it a little bit. Maybe a little bit less volume on the hi-hat here, less bass on the hi-hat. Okay, let's do a bass line again. Make it a four bar bass line. Two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, 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 four, 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 four. four. Of course, that didn't record because I never hit the record button. There we go. A little busy, but not too bad, right? The resonance going on there. Now this is with the Golden Master Engage. Let's hear it without it. 
I don't know, maybe there's some psychoacoustic effect going on, maybe it's a placebo. Uh, we can theorize all we want, but the fact of the matter is I definitely hear a big difference in just punch quality clarity whenever the Golden Master is engaged. And that's besides the fact that you get all this control. You can fine tune it and you can use it for performance effects. Very cool. I do enjoy this module. Now I'll probably make some new cables that will be mini plug TRS to microphone XLR cables just to make it easier uh, without having to use this crazy contraption I put together. That's the one thing that I think this module uh, would have benefited from would have been uh, actual XLR outputs. But then again, that would have made them bigger and possibly more expensive. So I'm pretty happy with what it is. Now here you have trim pots, which are supposed to be set it and forget it, right? For the input and the output. So you can both set, for example, right now I'm driving that compressor and that limiter way harder now. So I raised that. Let's turn that off now. Now, I'm clipping on my interface, so I need to turn it slightly down on the output trim pot here. That's better. Now let's hear engaged again. And here it is in bypass. Yeah, definitely a little box here, a little less bright, a little less punchy. So, yeah definitely a cool module to have if you play live or even for recording. Now is it gonna replace a, an expensive plug-in setup for mastering your tracks? Probably not, but maybe. Maybe if you really like what you're getting out of it, you don't need to do much in the computer afterwards. You know, now some people have mentioned the fact that uh, it's digital, it has DAX, and it might introduce noise. And uh, online there's been a little bit of a discussion about how much noise the Golden Master is actually adding. I don't think it's adding noise. I think what happens is with any compressor, uh, it's going to bring up the noise floor whenever there's space. But as right now, I stop this. Can you hear anything? No, you know why? Because it has a noise gate. And it's a slow-acting noise gate, so it's not going to cut off any of your tails, reverb tails, or pad decay, or anything like that. It just, it really only engages after it's been quiet for a little while. So it's great for that purpose as well. You can stop your sequence and it's not going to be amplifying the noise from your system. And we all suffer from a bit of noise in our systems, don't we? I mean, it's pretty unusual that a Eurorack system is perfectly, you know, clean, has uh, a really high signal to noise ratio. Usually a combination of modules and power supplies and whatnot that we have will have some noise output. So yeah, the compressor is going to bring that up. That's just how compressors work. But the noise gate in the Golden Master is very smartly implemented. Uh, so you don't have to turn off the volume if you stop this synth and then move on to something else in your patch. It's just really nice to have that there. It's nice to have that limiter that, again, you don't have any control over, but it just makes sure that that ceiling doesn't get crossed and you're not going to destroy speakers or people's uh, hearing or anything like that. So yeah, let's let's hear that sequence again. And let me just play around a little bit with it. Sort of a loudness smile, right? With the mid all the way down. It's a little too much though. It's 
go back to the stereo enhancer. A much narrower image. And as I open it up, crazy. And it gets super wide, right? It definitely opens it up. Back to the EQ. Yeah, I really love how performative it is. Like it could be just a sort of set it and forget it mastering processor just to give you that shimmer and punch. I think shimmer and punch would have been a good alternative name for this module. <laughs> uh, but it's also very performative. It's like DJs, you know, uh, will often use the EQ in their mixers as a uh, as a performance device. You can do the same with the Golden Master. By the way, I didn't mention, but you do have a VCA in over here. So what does that do exactly? Let's grab a cable and see what that does. I'm going to connect it to a joystick output here. And yeah, that's exactly what you would expect. It's a volume, a master volume control, remote control, so you can make fade outs and fade ins. Using external CV. You can even apply a tremolo, for example, if I choose the sine wave mode here on my black joystick we're getting a volume tremolo you can even plug a volume pedal in there an expression pedal in there and control your master volume final volume with your feet. That's kind of cool right there. Now another cool use for this VCA is for side chaining, right? You can have, for example, the kick drum going in outside of the Golden Master and have the envelope that you use for that kick drum's amplitude inverted and going into that VCA CV input and it'll duck your main mix whenever there's a kick hit. So that's another cool use for that. All right, so that's it for today's video. I hope you liked it. I hope you liked the Golden Master. I really do. And stay tuned for another cool endorphins module for which I'm doing a review also very soon, which is the Total Recall, also by endorphins, also from their black 6HP series of modules. And it's a really cool preset manager, uh, AKA sequencer, AKA macro controller, uh, with lots of really cool features. So excited to make that video as well. And that's it for today. See you soon and stay noisy.